girls, welcome back to my channel. It's Chelsea where we talk about all things glam and all things girly. I am a beauty enthusiast that loves to talk about everything dealing with beauty and makeup and today we got, we got some good content in this one. We are comparing two foundations from Dior. They are new releases. One is going to be the new Dior Forever Skin Glow Foundation and the other is the new and reformulated Dior Capture Total, turn it around, foundation. So both of these foundations are not necessarily new to the collection or the brand, I should say, but they both have been reformulated. So I cannot wait to show you all how they perform throughout the day. We will be having both of these foundations on for eight hours. So stay tuned at the end of the video for my final thoughts and to see how they wear. And you guys, remember I was talking about these and will I buy it, my pay or stay? I did end up picking up both of the new Chanel Blush so I will also be demoing both of these in this video and sharing with you my thoughts about them. So stay tuned for all of that. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I truly do appreciate it. And let's get right into this video. Starting out with the new Dior, or I should say the reformulated Dior Forever Skin Glow uh, Foundation. This is what the bottle looks like. It does look slightly different from the packaging of the original one. Now I do have a sample of the original Forever Skin Glow, so if you are interested in seeing a comparison between the two, leave that in the comment section down below. I did pick up the shade 4WP, and this does retail for $52, and we get the standard one fluid ounce or 30 milliliters of product. This foundation does come in 42 shades, and it is available um, at Sephora, and I saw it at Nordstrom as well, and of course on the Dior website. So this is going to have medium coverage, a radiant finish, it's supposed to be hydrating and long wearing, and it's a Dior foundation with 24 hour wear, radiant medium to full coverage and hydration with 86% skincare ingredients to visibly improve skin over time. So some of the key ingredients that we have in this particular foundation, we have, we have an SPF of 30, um, and under. That's kind of odd, it says 30 and under. Then we have iris extract that will guard against oxidation. We have hibiscus extract that helps to renew the look of skin. And then wild pansy extract that will maintain hydration for healthy looking skin. Other things about the foundation is that it is heat and humidity resistant. And then, like I said, it's going to deliver up to 24 hours of true wear and hydration. Lastly, this is supposed to visibly reduce pores for a smoother and radiant looking skin. And the packaging is recyclable and, is, and it actually is composed of recyclable materials, which is pretty interesting um, because it does have a glass-like feel to it. And I don't know if this is completely glass, but however, it's great that we can recycle this. So when applying this to the face, now just to give you like a heads up, I didn't really try the older formulation. I did put the sample on because I initially was going to review this foundation against the original formulation. And I still might do that, especially if you all are interested. But I saw Gabe Love's makeup do a comparison between these two and I was so blown away by the results at the end of the video. I was like, I need to do this comparison. So thank you Gabe for doing that comparison because I, I myself wanted to see like, how did these two compare against my skin? Because I have my thoughts already formulated about the Capture Total foundation, but I, I don't know yet how I feel about this one. So prior to putting on both of the foundations, I didn't put any uh, primer on. I just used the new Chanel Numino Oil collection for my skincare and then went in with the foundations. So when applying this foundation, I used the BK Beauty 101 brush and I felt like this foundation was a little thick, like not too thick, but it definitely like doesn't have any type of like uh, fluidity to it. And so when blending it on the face, I think it blended out quite nicely, but I definitely felt like I had to um, help build, blend the product into the skin and press it into the skin. So I would definitely suggest using some type of like pressing motion to make sure that the product does seep into the skin and blend into the skin. However, it didn't take long for that to occur. And I felt like the overall finish looked very nice. For this being a radiant type of foundation, I don't think that this comes off looking too dewy or like overly radiant upon application. The shade 4WP, I do like the shade. Um, and 
I think it looks really nice. I love when a foundation has a peach undertone because I just think it looks so complimentary against my skin. It's some of my favorite foundations. And um, I think it, I think it blended really nicely into the skin. I would highly agree that this has medium to full coverage because um, it didn't take much to really dull down my freckles. And I do think that this is buildable. So um, on first application, I felt like I had like a nice like light medium type of coverage and then after adding that second layer I do feel like I was able to build it up to like a nice solid medium type of coverage so I think you could potentially build this up to full coverage maybe like a light full coverage um, I don't think you can get like opacity with this but I definitely think you can get a nice strong medium to full coverage with this foundation now moving on to the Dior Capture Total Cell Energy Serum Potent Serum Foundation. So this foundation retails for $82. We get a total of 12 shades and we get the standard one fluid ounce of product. Like I mentioned earlier, this is reformulated to their line. So this is a hydrating serum foundation reinvented to deliver not just coverage, but firmer, more radiant skin over time. So this serum foundation combines the revitalizing power of Dior's Gardens Precious Long, Longoza flower with the hydration of hyaluronic acid. The anti-aging makeup essential is formulated with skin perfecting pigments to instantly smooth and brighten the complexion. So this foundation I have been wearing multiple times since I purchased it and just as a heads up, I love it. I stand for it. It is so plumping on the skin and I already know you're going to ask and I gotta do a foundation comparison between the two. So we got a whole lot of foundation reviews and comparisons coming. I am gonna compare this one to the new Chanel foundation because both of these both of these foundations add like a very youthful plumping and radiant and revitalizing look to the skin. And so I wanna see them in action next to each other because just off of just how they wear alone, I can't say which one is better, which one does that, you know, and all of those things. Um, but this one, very similarly to Chanel, adds a very plumping, hydrating effect. And every time I wear this foundation, I'm just like, look at my skin. Look at her. She just looks so youthful. So I went in with the Sonia G Jumbo Base Brush. I think that was what I used. Yes, Jumbo Base Brush to blend out this foundation. I did add too much because it took a lot to blend it into the skin and I felt like I was getting some streaking while I was trying to blend it into the skin. And I haven't had that issue before because I don't typically go in with that much just for half my face. So what you saw me apply, I typically use that to apply all over the face. So I definitely had to go in press it into the skin, but it ended up blending really nicely. This particular texture is thinner than the Dior Radiant or Forever Glow foundation. Um, so like I said, I did have some streaking initially because I added too much. So just press it into the skin if you're using a brush or you can use a sponge and definitely do not use too much because you don't need a lot. Um, when this is applied to the skin after blending it in, it just looks so flawless on the skin. Like this foundation is for sure going to be a favorite of this whole entire year. It is, it's just amazing. So I wear shade 4W and yes, no, I got shade 4N in this particular foundation. And I do like this shade. I think, you know, it's probably slightly light and, um, you know, I might have to like tweak it a bit in the summertime, but shade five in definitely looked a little too deep. And so, you know, I'm, I'm working with four in and I don't know, maybe in the summer, if I feel like I need it, I'll get five in if I feel like I can mix the two for a better shade. That's how much I like this. I will spend another $82 if needed so that I can wear this foundation all year. It looks stunning on the skin. Um, so looking at both of them on the skin after applied, I think both sides look really, really beautiful and just youthful and like radiant. Um, I do feel like the Forever Skin Glow does come off looking a little more matte than the Dior Capture Total Foundation. And I still feel the same way now. So I've had both of these foundations on 
for about two hours right now. And looking at them both, I do feel like I see more radiance on this side of the face compared to this side of the face. So wanted to do flash photography since both of these foundations do have SPF in them. And surprisingly, I don't think we see really any major flashback between either foundation. Um, I also have sunscreen underneath my foundations. And like I said, don't really see any flashback on either side. So that's really good. I'm always happy to see that. I didn't go outside like in like the sunlight because it was extremely cold, number one. And if I'm being really honest, I just had on a robe and I didn't feel like going upstairs <laughs> to put some clothes on to go outside. So I did show you what both foundations look like in natural lighting. And once again, I think both of them look really beautiful against the complexion. Um, and I think color match both sides look really complimentary to my skin. So I am very happy with both of these shades. In terms of coverage for the Capture Show towel, I think we do get a nice, strong medium. Like I would say between medium, almost to full coverage with this Capture Show towel, which I was really shocked about because this foundation is more so like a like skincare foundation. So I wasn't expecting a lot of coverage from it but it actually comes with a lot of coverage. Um, I do have a nice little pimple here and I did have to put my mask on temporarily, um, like before I finished my makeup. So I do think some of the foundation did rub off from that acne scar because initially I felt like it covered it pretty nicely. I also saw before um, I finished my makeup that from the mask, I did have two mask lines on my face. So, um, like I said, it was before like I set my makeup and things like that. So we'll definitely see how this these foundations hold up under a mask now that I've set everything because I do have to do some running around. So we'll stay tuned for that later on in the video. Um, however, I was able to just take my foundation brushes, tapped over the lines and everything blended back in. So it wasn't a hard fix, but you know, just to let you know, both of these foundations are going to need to be set so that they can last longer. I'll say that. Okay, um, on top of my face, I just added concealer. So I added the YSL Touche Clot Brightening Concealer in the shade four. I went in and set the concealer with Kosas Cloud Set Powder in the shade Comfy. Um, I did a very, very, very light dusting of the perimeter of my face with the Gucci powder shade seven. And when I say light dusting, I'm talking light dusting. All I wanted to do was just set the foundations because especially with the Capture Total side, I felt like that one is definitely a foundation that needs to be set. Um, I have pretty normal skin and I was like, okay, yeah, if, if I need this to last, I'm gonna have to set it. Because this side, the, tap, the Capture Total side, definitely I say would pull a little more dewy than just radiant. So um, just put a very light dusting of powder on both sides of the face. And uh, on my eyes, I have the Charlotte Tilbury Quad in the shade Golden Goddess. Um, and this is what she looks like here if you're interested. And I just used this over pretty much all over the lid. I smoked out the edges of the eye with this shade and then I added this to the center of the eyelid and then in the inner corner and that was it, like very simple eye look. Okay, and then um, Lancome Lash Idol Mascara with the Lancome Lash Primer and Kosas on the brows. So that's what's all over my face. So when I initially like did my eyeshadow, did my brows, I did show you all a clip of how both sides looked. That was just with concealer, um, a little bit of powder, and like I said, eyes and brows done. And I think both sides just look stunning. Like both sides just look stunning and when i shot the footage of those foundations before i put on the blush it was right before i, sh I started filming now so both foundations have been on for about a couple hours and i just both sides look beautiful i am so interested to see how these foundations are going to hold up throughout the day and compare to each other because i know how the capture total works but i'm interested to see how dior works so very interested in that. One last thing that I want to point out is I do have some settling of the Capture Total in this fine line here. So I'll come in a little close so you can see it. So we'll take a look, see how that wears throughout the day, see if we have any additional settling or anything like that. Um, but everywhere else, 
I think everything just looks stunning, okay? Stunning. So, into these new blushes. I was, like I said earlier, I was debating on whether or not I should get them because they're $70 and I was like, you know what? I, I don't need to buy every release. Just because it's out there, I don't need to buy it, you know? I need to save money, not buy everything. And then when I was talking in my pay or stay, I was telling you all how I missed the, um, the, the Chanel blush duo. It was, it was like a blush and highlighter duo from last year. And like, I have such FOMO cause I really, really wish I would have gotten that one. So after like reading all the comments under that video, I was like, you know what? Forget this. I'm getting it. I'm getting them and I did so these blushes both retail for $70 I did check Nordstrom they are sold out on Nordstrom but they both are still available on the Chanel website these are limited edition powder blushes that are created exclusively for the spring summer 2022 collection the delicate formula adds radiant color to the cheeks it's embossed with a motif inspired by the light of the Mediterranean Sun that shines over La Pausa Gabrielle Chanel's villa in the south of France so here's a really nice close look at both of these blushes. This is the blush in the shade Brune Russi. I hope I'm saying these words correctly. And then this is a closer look at the shade Peche Rosé. So started off with adding Brune Russi onto the cheeks because I was like, this could work for me as a bronzer. And what y'all think? I think this works as a really cute bronzer against my complexion. So it has a brown base to it, but we do see a reddish hue. Um, and I like that this is not too red because it can be worn against lighter skin as a nice like reddish bronzer. So here's a swatch of what Brune Russi looks like against my complexion. And I really, really like it. When you look up close, you can see just like this um, goldish uh, shimmer to it. So it's a nice, like very like toned down uh, radiant blush. It's nothing too crazy. If you don't like radiance or shimmer in your blushes, I think you still could very much enjoy these because the radiance is very, very subtle, but it's definitely there when you look up close. So I started off on this side, and what I don't know is if, I, I felt like when applying the bronzer on this side, it was skipping and like looking patchy, um, especially like right around here. So I applied it, applied it over the forehead here, left this side unapplied. I, I didn't apply it on this side because I wanted to apply the other blush first, but I felt like it just looked kind of muddy and patchy. I don't know if it was the brush that I was using um, or if it was the foundation. I don't know if maybe I hadn't set it completely so it was like kind of sticking to the foundation. I'm not really too sure, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if it was more so the foundation versus the blush because when I got on this side, it was a much better application. I'll get to that very shortly. Um, but I did go in and like kind of blended it out with my Sungaji Smooth Buffer Brush and I felt like we got it to a point where it looked pretty nice. And I was just like, okay, okay. Then I went in with Peche Rosé and blended it out on this side of the cheeks and it's a, it looks like a highlighter on me. And that's what I thought when I initially saw um, Hey It's Jacqueline review it. And I was like, okay, this is probably just gonna be like a highlight on me. And initially I wasn't going to get it, but then I was just like, well, you know, if it is a highlighter, like it could be a really beautiful one. So I'm still gonna get it. So then when I saw it, I was like, oh, this looks like this is actually gonna show up like this color on the cheeks. And I am slightly disappointed that it doesn't. I was hoping that I would get more like peachy coralness from it because it's so pretty but against my complexion i think it just looks more like a highlight and i'm not gonna lie the highlight is stunning so here's a swatch of it and it just like i said just looks more like a highlighter on me so i mean i wish it had more color to it so that it could pull more like peachy and like corally but I do like it and I think both shades together on the cheek look very complimentary so when I applied um, Brune Russi on this side of my cheek I went in with the BK Beauty travel 107 brush and blended that in and it blended flawlessly on this side so I don't think 
the patchiness was from the blush. I think it might have just come from the foundation and maybe I didn't set it enough in that area um, and that's why it was kind of patchy um, because it looks so beautiful, so beautiful against this side of the cheek. So I did like put it back on this side to try to even out both the sides and then I did add Pesh uh, Rosé on the apples of the cheek here so that the blushes looked hopefully complimentary but I really enjoy both of these blushes and like I said I wish this would have been deeper in the actual pigment and shade of the blush but I am happy to have it and I'll just use it as a highlighter because that's pretty much what it looks like <laughs> against my skin. On the lips, I'm wearing the Chantecai Lip Chic in the shade Damask. I love their lip cheeks, so pretty and comfortable. So that is the finished look. I'm gonna go about my day and then we will check back in about eight hours later and share with you my final thoughts and also see how both of these blushes held up, especially under my mask, so stay tuned. Okay, so we are back, it is the end of the day. I've had both of these foundations on for at least eight hours. So let's come on in and see how we've held up. Okay, so just off of first impressions, I, I think both sides look really good after eight hours. Now, as you can see, I wore my mask like multiple times today, like talking in the mask, taking it on, putting it off. So we definitely see like right around here, I don't really have any product left on my nose that's from the mask. You can also see where the um, foundation has rubbed off on this side. And we can see a little bit on this side, but I feel like you can see it more so like right here. Um, we don't see it as much anymore, but when I would initially take my mask on and off, I would see um, mask lines on both sides. And um, I did do some eating today, um, but not too much. So for the most part, you know, both of these foundations, I would say it's more so the Dior one. It was saying that it has um, 24 hour lasting power. I, I mean, I don't think it's gonna last that long. Um, a good amount of it is still left on my face and I think like looking at my face from afar, you can still tell that I have makeup on. But I think for the most part, both of these foundations held up very well after eight hours, but we do see some wearing away of the uh, foundation from both of them. If we did not have to wear a mask or anything, these would look so much better. Um, and the way that I know that is because I've worn the Capture Total foundation multiple times where I didn't have to like put my mask on, wear it for so long and keep taking it on and off. And it just looked so flawless at the end of the day. Like it looked beautiful. And I can tell that this Dior one has the potential to do the same because in terms of like finish, I feel like the Dior side still looks a little more matte. It's not as uh, luminous. It's not as like almost dewy like like the Capture Total is. Um, so I do feel like we can get very good wear from the Dior side and I do feel like the Capture Total side does give us really good lasting power. Like I said, granted in this day and time, we are wearing our mask a lot more, um, but if you did not have to wear your mask all day, every day, or if you weren't just constantly taking it on, putting it, taking it off, putting it on, where you're gonna be constantly rubbing the foundation away, then you're gonna have, you know, much better wear of the foundations. But I do think for what, you know, the foundations have been under, taking the mask off, putting it on, taking it off, put it on. I think both sides have held up very well and I'm very pleased with them. Now, in terms of who I think these foundations are for, with the Dior, let's like, let's talk about it. With the Dior, this is a Forever Glow foundation. And I think for it to be a glow foundation, it is not over, overly glowy, it's not overly dewy. Um, yes, we do see some radiance on my face, but nothing alarming and nothing like, that I, I thought it would be. I thought I would have had, I thought I would have had as much like radiance on the Dior side as I do the Capture Total side. Um, and so I feel like this foundation really could work very well for, of course, uh, drier skin, normal skin, combination oily. I mean, I would say if you have oily skin, you, you probably would wanna check out the matte version because they do have a matte version. There are 42 shades in the matte version as well. Um, but if you're somebody who's like, I kinda wanna try like a glow foundation, but I don't want anything doing the most, 
this one might be one to check out because I'm, I'm quite shocked, even like around my nose, I've got some radiance, but like nothing, like I said, nothing alarming or nothing that's like, oh my gosh, I need to blot like yesterday. Um, so I, I'm actually enjoying this. I, I didn't know what I would think um, because like I told you all, I never really tried the older formula to like really get to know it and see how it, you know, wears and all of these other things. So, you know, happy to have this one. I do like this one and I definitely can see myself reaching for it. With the Capture to a Towel, I'm just in love with this one. I do feel like this one is going to work better for people who have drier skin or normal skin. Um, unless you have combination oily skin or oily skin and you just like a really good radiance, I don't know if you would enjoy this one because it is a little more dewy. It is a little more radiant than what you might like. Um, this one also only has 12 shades, which is not acceptable. And for this great of a formulation, we need more shades. However, my friend Gabe from Gabe Loves Makeup, he's been in the industry for over 30 years and he was actually the one who recommended this one to me. He said that even though there's only 12 shades, they are able to match people quite well with the shades that they have. And so this foundation can be flexible. So if you are interested in this foundation and if you are able to go in store and try it out, definitely go to a Dior counter so that they can match you because you might be able to find a shade even if it doesn't look like there's a shade from the website. So, you know, don't let the 12 shades discourage you, but you know, do know that there needs some more work on the shade range. Now in terms of my smile line, there was no additional settling, and yes, I was taking my mask on and off, but from previous times that I've worn this foundation, there there is no excessive settling of the foundation in my smile lines. And just overall, I feel like whenever I wear this Capture Total foundation, my skin just looks more plump and radiant and youthful. Like, I love this foundation. So in my opinion, both of these are a win for me, but if I had to choose one, I'm so still going for Capture Total because this one just, look at her. But this one looks amazing too. So I'm very happy to have both. I cannot wait to hear your thoughts down below as to what you think of either foundation. Which one do you think you're more interested in? Which side do you like better? Leave that in the comment section below. Now with the blushes, Brun Rusi is still here. She's still saying hello and I really enjoy it. I feel like the the blush looks so much better on this side of the face than this side. And I already talked to you all about what I think it was. Um, so I'll continue to play with that with that blush to see like, does it prefer a certain formula or do I have to set it first? Or like, you know, I don't know. Um, and then Peche Rosé, I mean, we still see the glow on my cheeks, but in terms of the color, like I really don't see any of the color there. So once again, happy to have that lighter blush, but wishing I just had more pigment from it. Um, but all in all, very happy with the products that I used today. And I would say for the Chanel blushes, I'm glad that I have them. I don't regret purchasing them. Um, but if I had to choose one, I would go with Brune Russi because that one in terms of how it shows up, it actually shows up as having some color on the cheeks. Um, and, in, and unless you just want the Peche Rosé, I don't think you need it if you're anywhere around my complexion, unless you want to use it as a highlighter. That's how I'm gonna use it so I can get some use out of it. Um, but I don't think both blushes are a need if you can't wear both of them as a blush. Does that make sense? Like if I would have been able to try these out in store, I just would have picked up Brun Rusi. Okay? Okay, so let me know your thoughts down below on all of the products we tried out today. And if you've made it to this point in the video and you haven't yet to subscribe to my channel, I would love for you to consider subscribing and joining the Glam Girl Squad because we'd love to have you. And guys, that is it. Thank you so much for watching and I really hope to see you in my very next video. Bye guys.